Welcome everybody! Here we are today with a uh, Super Famicom. Ho ho! I love my family computers in super form. As you can see we have a slight problem with a green line running vertically. And you also notice that uh, it's moving. So I'm going to have to work out what's going on there. Uh, this unit was purchased brand new. No, that's not true. It's quite old. It's 20 odd years old. It was purchased uh, from Japan in working condition. Um, unfortunately, the game that they decided to throw in for free shows a fault. Which is unfortunate. Not a good game to bundle if it shows off the, uh, the faults with the console. Note to sellers, be honest. At least this seller is, because they're shipping me a replacement main board. Um, regardless, so... That's very nice of them, so that may very well fix the problem, but I'm going to try and work out what's wrong with it... now. So, when I first received it, the unit wouldn't even power on. So, a lack of power is usually, you know, something to worry about, because... no red light on your... Famicom or SNES, and you can't really do anything. So, I got out the old multimeter and tested things and the fuse was okay, so no problem with the fuse. Continuity was okay. So I had a look at the um, voltage regulator, the uh, 7805. And there was voltage going in, definitely. And there was no voltage going out. And I thought, usually, in most cases, in a 7805, there is voltage going out. But there wasn't, so I ordered some voltage regulators. They're here. I'm going to install them. Because there is a slight chance, although, I mean, this issue does look to be, it's very consistent. I've been running this for several hours now, and we haven't had any problems. I mean, except for the green line. Look at how clear those graphics are. Everything else seems to be working fine. So it is more or less cosmetic, so it's not a showstopper, unlike the uh, Madden, well, the other Super Nintendo I did where it had trace repair. So I'm going to go ahead and completely disassemble. Now I've already partially disassembled Whoop. the Super Nintendo there. Sorry, Super Famicom. And it's not a one-chip model, it's uh, one of the older ones. Uh, ooh, GPM-02. Uh, SNS CPU GPM-02. So we'll go ahead and replace the little voltage regulator there first. And while we've got it in pieces, we can actually have a look at the main board, both sides. Make sure there's no corrosion anywhere. No broken traces, which would be... You know, we find a broken trace, that's not a bad thing. That's an easy fix. But we'll start with the voltage regulator because it wasn't working the other day and now it miraculously is. So let's get to the workbench. Alright, so you've made it to the bench. You've already half disassembled your console. So as you can see, we've got the bits and pieces over there. Uh, metal shielding for the lower half, covering the chips. Um, eject thingy me bob. That uh, honestly, I, I don't see why they needed that, but that's fine. So let's uh, let's have a look here at the Famicom of the Super variety. So as far as I can tell, this. The layout's quite similar to the other one I had, um, relatively recently. Just look for screws that are screwed in. So, unscrew your switch. Nothing under there. Cartridge slot has two screws, and I probably need a better screwdriver. So it looks like the, uh, the cartridge slot screws are slightly longer, so bear that in mind. Unless, so there's two at the back, three at the back. Start with the middle because that's, well, a terrible way of doing it. And that is the same length, so that's good. So maybe the ones around the RF are longer. Oh, heatsink's still warm. And make sure you ground yourself 
often so you don't short anything out. So the last thing you want is uh, more artifacting. There we go. Is that all? Is that all that holds it in? No, there must be more. Well, nope, there's nothing more. Okay, so uh, front bit, you'll want to disconnect that ribbon cable. Once that's nice and disconnected, you can set it free. And then lift this little guy out. There we go. Whoop. So give your base a bit of a dust out as well. While you've got it in pieces, it's going to slide off and smash something. Okay. Also disconnect the power there. And then you just want to really meticulously go over everything. Especially sort of near the microchips. <laughs> I know, that's not very specific. Of course, this could be a capacitor thing, but I don't have any capacitors on hand to replace. But when I do, I've picked up a Hakko uh, Hot Tweezers, an FX8804, uh, which will be great for melting everything off here. Cartridge slot, no problem. There we go. So, have a look at your board. See, mine's got a bit of corrosion on it there. Can't really see anything. But the good news is it doesn't look like it has been liquid damaged, which is a good thing in my book. So next thing you're going to want to do is remove the metal metal shielding. So we're trying to get to the uh, voltage regulator there. So to get to that metal shielding we need to, firstly, unscrew the voltage regulator. Secured to its giant heatsink. So put your other screws a little bit separate so you don't get them mixed up. And you also need to have some thermal paste if you've got it to uh, one, two, three. What's that fourth one do? Ah, RF connection to the RF. Okay, that's fine. I'm not even mad. Oh, wow. Okay, yep. Need better grip. These are obviously a bit bigger than what size is this? One? One, yeah. We'll use whatever this is, much bigger. So the heat sink has different uh, screws again. Gosh, these are in well. In a future video, we'll recap this one as well. With a bit of luck, this will become my uh... Ooh, my new Super Nintendo. Because, okay, unless the heatsink, it just comes up that easy. No blown S-Mix chips is on this one. <laughs> Love it when that happens. Or rather, when that doesn't happen. So we got 33s, 47s, radial. Two radial capacitors on here, which is nice. Well, three if you count the big one. 220. 220. Cool. So just have a look around, see if you can see any damage to the traces. If not, I'm not mad. I'm just going to give this a bit of a dust off, and then we'll desolder the uh, voltage regulator there. One thing I've just noticed is that there is no, and I mean there is no, uh, thermal paste on the back of the uh, 7805. 
which is interesting. Has it been reworked? I have no idea. But let's, uh, so the replacements I've got, oh there's some nice ST microelectronics or whatever their company is. Hopefully they're not fake. Uh, so what do we get? L7805CV and they were manufactured first quarter of uh, 2015 by the looks. These are rated at uh, 1.5 amps so they're more than sufficient for the SNES which runs at I think 1.3 maximum at least this particular model. So we'll crack out our uh, Oh, I love this suitcase. Ah, the Hakko 808. And my voltage regulator, which I haven't seen for a while. <laughs> uh, Alright, Hakko 808. And... Voltage regulator replacement. Whoa, what am I doing? Step down converter. Yep, I'll be back. That wasn't too hard, it was actually relatively nearby. Let's go ahead and just move this little guy around so he's not in the way. Whoop. Don't drop the expensive camera, don't drop the expensive camera. There we go. Well, this is professional. This is why this is a do-it-yourself channel, because you don't have someone standing by to record everything for you. I mean, that would be nice, but... I don't have that sort of money for an assistant. Power! This is shell out of here. Where am I going to put it? With the rest of it. There we go. Problem solved. Everything out of the way and hook the 808 in. Gosh, no wonder my videos are getting so long, it's because I just ramble on about nothing. <laughs> I've missed that noise. <laughs> Give that a minute or two to heat up. I think it's got the right tip. I have no idea though. So if you've got a Hack 0808, they're, they're amazing. <laughs> I'm glad I've got mine too, because they've released uh, They've actually uh, replaced them. They've been superseded by a, a sort of a yellow and blue one that uh, doesn't look as nice and costs a lot, from what I remember seeing. Ah, all right, well, I might as well flip this over. So you've just got to note some things before you go ahead and do anything. One is that that is the power switch. Uh, oh, there we go. <laughs> there he is, little 7805. So we'll be, uh... Ripping him out. Reckon the uh, desolder gun's ready. That's a yes. And we're looking at these three here. Oh, this thing melts solder like butter. Oh, good memories. All right, we'll start with the uh, I, which is input. That didn't sound right. Looks clear enough. Try 
trying to think what the last thing is I would have desoldered. It was something with 40 pins. <laughs> and if we flip that back over and find our focus, this little guy should just... <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. It's just beautiful. I love this thing. Whew, smells like old solder. Extra lead. And then you don't need your desolder gun anymore, so make sure that the tube is clear, which it is, no problem. Remove it and get it out of the way where it won't set fire to any carpet. All plastic. Okay, that is gonna set fire. Stay there. Okay, there we go, all right. Now we need to fire up this thing. Oh, it's plugged in. The soldering iron's never plugged in. Um, hmm. Oh, and I'm, I'm gonna wanna line this up so that it matches where the screw hole is, the, uh, the heat sink. So I guess I can just tack one of the uh, legs in. Yeah, I can see this working. <laughs> Gravity? This is perfectly safe for the components. There we go. It's at a good height, I think. And again, I am a bit biased in this, aren't I? So I found a whole bunch of solder just rolling around the bottom of my uh, toolbox the other day, which... <laughs> we'll use some on this. I'm using quite fine solder, but looks... Yeah, we, what are we trying to be tacking? Let's tack the input. Tack, tack, tackaroo. enough. Uh, let's have a look. Yep, that's back to front. No. What? Ah, I was aligning the wrong holes. There you go. Happens to the most novice of us. So probably best to pop one of these screws in. Yeah, so it needs to go down a little bit. So I'll just heat up that one leg that we tacked. Which was the first one? I think it was the first one. Soldering iron still on? I can't see what I'm doing. Oh! <gasps> that was too much! No! Oh, the joys. Oh, uh, effect. And then once that's in, all you need to do is really just add more solder. Just, I mean, obviously soldered the, the two other legs. Otherwise you're not gonna get any power. Which used to be the. F Why would I start with that one? Ah, <laughs> uh, been out of the game too long. I mean, technically, I could just thread it through, which I can't anymore because I blocked the hole with solder, and blue tack it. Oh, there we go. Or you could screw it in. Actually, screwing in would make a lot more sense. Just got to remember to come back to it later and uh, put some thermal paste in, which uh, obviously whoever last worked on this one did not. Okay, so solder. 
carry on. Ah, yes, the sweet smell of solder going directly into my eyes. my eyes can smell it but oh wait my nose that would probably have something to do with it yeah oh, I've got test points on the underside that's good to know Looking good. Alrighty, so let's uh, get some scissors and trim those legs. <sighs> so we can test after reassembly. Stand by. Well, I thought I'd uh, just remind you in case you've forgotten to put some thermal paste on and to clip the legs, which I still haven't done. I actually use uh, nail scissors, which don't use them on your nails because they will hurt. Yep, don't know where that one went. No, nope, one out of three ain't bad. That's what Meatloaf says. <laughs> or something along those lines anyway. What else did I need? Thermal paste. So I'm using... I actually just found this in the drawer a bit earlier this afternoon. So you don't need much of it. In fact, you probably don't really need any. If you don't have any, don't cry. I mean, it's got, you know, a space for it, so... Pop a little bit on if you've got it. Yep, this is possibly the worst thermal paste ever. Also, don't touch thermal paste, it's not, not good for you. Do as I say, not as I do. Yeah, great. Okay, that's good enough. Ooh, look at that. You do have a little notch on here which you can line your um I forgot its name. Voltage regulator up with. Which, you know, works well. What's that screw? <laughs> In. Looks good so far. One, two, three, back in. you put too much thermal paste in. Go get a Q-tip or cotton tip. What do they call them? Cotton tips. Pure softness, but that's not why we're using them. Could be using a bit of glass, but uh, this is much more convenient than a shard of glass. Just wipe away the excess. Ah, uh, 
And then I think we're good to pop it back in the case and give it a power on. Now, obviously this part, you know, if it catches fire, I love it. Whenever I work on something power related, no matter how low the voltage, <laughs> I can dust out the case. That's fine. I'll do that, I'll do that next. I'm all, always very careful that uh, something isn't about to catch fire. Don't really like it when things catch fire. Okay, so power switch. Thankfully these do have a fuse, but they may not protect against everything. So let's get back to the, uh, the main room with the TV and give this a go. Well, there we have it. It's turning on still. Looks like I've got the cartridge in slightly crooked because it's not showing any video. So I'm going to rejigger that. On film! Whoop, 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 whoop. is uh, cleaning out the cartridge slot. Oh, we've got no video, and well, we've got some video. We've got a black screen with a green line. So it wasn't the voltage regulator, but that's, that's what the process of elimination is all about. It's my manual focus, there we go. Where are those things falling to? There's nothing down there. Oh well, next step is to clean the cartridge slot. Oh, that was the other thing that was interesting. When I reconnected it, I may have blown the fuse. So I haven't got any screws in holding the main board in. So if, if you are doing something like this, make sure you rejigger your screws, otherwise you're gonna end up with no video. It's the last thing you want. Or no power. Whoa. So it is still running and the green line is still there. Yep, and it's got a new fuse. Which I'll need to replace because it is... nearly double what the original was, which is a bad idea. It just means that whatever's broken is going to short out much, much worse. So I'm using a 2.5 amp fuse instead of a 1.5, which I believe the... must be a Sega CD of some sort has. You could use a wire link, but that's a terrible idea because then the fuse goes to blow and there's no fuse there and instead you get a really hot wire which then sets fire to your house. If it's not your house, the problem's a bit moot. Still, err on the side of caution. So let's uh, clean the slot out and if that fixes it I'm going to be very upset. <laughs> So far, 